Hi, this is Julia M. Spencer. I'm your real estate advisor, investor, and your number one source for real estate advice online. Welcome to the city of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. I will be here all of July of 2017 on vacation with my kids. Um, and actually, I'm able to afford this really cool vacation because I am a real estate investor. This is something very easy, something that you can do. But let me get to the topic of this video because while I'm here on vacation, I'm still going to answer real estate investment questions. I'm going to continue recording my audiobooks and I'm going to continue shooting videos wherever I can if I find a good opportunity to shoot something. So let's talk about this video. The topic of this video is um, how do you research a mortgage on a piece of real estate in the United States? How do you do that? And is that even public information? So I got a message from a subscriber who wants to know whether he can research a mortgage, um, maybe not his, maybe his neighbors, I don't know, um, to see how much that person paid for their property, how much their down payment was, what their interest rate is, and also um, how much is left on the mortgage and how do you research that. I'm going to include that information actually in my newest audiobook on tax sale foreclosure investing. This will be my second audiobook on tax sale foreclosure investing. The first one is already out there on my website. You can download it today, juliamspencer.com. And depending on what time you listen to this video, probably the second one will be out already also. Because obviously this video will stay online for forever, as long as YouTube lets me keep it. So let's answer the question, how do you research somebody else's mortgage or anybody else's mortgage or even if there is a mortgage, which is something that you'll need to know if you're investing in tax sale foreclosures and um, if you want to know if there's liens on the property. So the thing is that all real estate in the United States has property records. The property records are usually filed at the courthouse for the county where the property is located. These are a matter of public record, so you can actually go to the courthouse and check on those properties. And you can go to the courthouse and basically go to the um, court recorder or the property records. This be a specific section in the courthouse, in the county courthouse, where the property is located. You can ask any clerk there to show you how to use their systems. Um, in the older um, days, they used to do this with really thick books. They're like super thick there's hundreds of books and basically they have like a little um, system of little cards and stuff and you can find a property and they'll tell you which book and which page you're supposed to look these days everything's pretty much digitized and a lot of the stuff is actually online so you can actually probably just type in the name of your county that where you're looking and see if you can find real estate records or property records or real estate and see if you can pull up anything there but in terms of a mortgage, what you're looking for is a warranty deed or security deed document. If there is a mortgage on a particular property, then that would be filed right there at the courthouse where those records are basically. And um, you'll be able to see then for how much, first off, a couple of things of information you're going to see on that record. First off, when the mortgage was signed into um, action basically, or when it was filed was probably it was filed a couple of days after it was signed so the date of sale you'll be able to find that out um, you'll be able to find out how much the person paid for the property um, a lot of times obviously if you have a mortgage the bank pays for it and the person that um, signs the mortgage document then gets a a warranty deed in exchange for a security deed so basically um, the ownership of the property is subject to them paying for that particular um, mortgage for however many months or years and for a specific rate that's specified in the document and then you will also be able to see what kind of mortgage it is like say is it a fixed mortgage where the payments don't change over the term or is it a variable mortgage or is it a balloon payment mortgage and those kinds of things so you'll be able to see all of that from that document now in terms of how much is actually left on the mortgage at any particular time that you look at it you have to take it a little bit further there's actually amortization schedules that you can look up online. These are called amortization schedules. It's kind of like a long word, but if you type it into any kind of Google search, you'll be able to pull it up. And this is where you put in the basic variables of that particular mortgage, which is 
the date that it was started, for how many years it was signed for. Usually mortgages go anywhere um, 15 to 20 to 30 years. It also tells you the terms of the interest rate. Um, if it's a fixed mortgage, now if it's a variable interest mortgage, then you wouldn't know the particular interest at that particular time that you're looking, but you'd be able to um, calculate it because it will tell you that um, the interest rate will vary with whatever the prime rate is at the moment, which is also something that you can look up online. And then you basically would plug in all those numbers and then you'll be able to see where you are in that amortization schedule. So basically, if you've already been making, or the person that you're looking up that signed this mortgage has already been making payments for on a 30-year mortgage for five years, you're gonna be at the very beginning of the amortization schedule still. So that means a lot of the money that that person is paying or that you're paying if it's your mortgage is gonna go for the interest and very little to the actual equity. So you'll be able to calculate all that. Now, um, if you want to know how much actually the payment is that that person is paying, a lot of times mortgages will also establish an escrow account in your name alongside the mortgage. So there'll be a payment for the principal, for the interest, for the um, insurance, as well as the taxes. So all these, or you know, all these four things. In some states, even the condo association fees, depending on what state you're in. But basically, all those four things make up the payment. So um, it won't tell you directly on the mortgage usually what the payment is, but it's very easy to calculate that. You just need these little pieces, plug all that information in, figure out what date is it right now, and then you'll see how much is left on the mortgage, how much the payment is, if they're behind on anything, and you'll be able to see all of that. You'll also be able to see if there's any other liens against the property, such as a land lien or a um, lawn lien, for example, if the county or the city had to come and pay the, to cut the grass because the owner didn't pay it, stuff like that, and any kind of construction liens. For example, if the owner had a roof repaired and didn't make the payment to the contractor, then the contractor would basically, you know, be able to put a lien against the property, which means that they're still not going to get paid, but the owner would have to satisfy all liens before they could release a good warranty deed to the next owner upon sale. So I hope all of this made sense. I hope it's not information overload. If it is, don't hesitate to go to my website and download my audiobook on this topic, juliamspencer.com. That audiobook is going to explain everything in much more detail and I'm going to go even into more detail into some of the questions that you guys ask me, which is awesome by the way. Thank you so much. And um, I hope to see you investing very successfully soon. And I'm going to go get myself a coffee now because it's very early in the morning here. Actually, for us in the U.S., it's about midnight. But here, obviously, it's light outside at 6 o'clock in the morning. We're about to catch our next flight. And don't forget to go to my website, juliamspencer.com. I am your real estate investment advisor online. And I'm ready and stand ready to help you in all your questions. Thank you. For your free guide to real estate investing, visit juliamspencer.com.